you like to see the library? Okay. You know, acid changed my life. I was an Irish Catholic kid who was the New Jersey State Oratory Champion for the American Legion, and um, acid ripped the top of my head off and made me see the world in an entirely different way, and I, I think a lot of my pictures represent that. I, I'm also a Gemini, so duality interests me, and a lot of my better pictures, I think, are, are the double exposures. The family asset is the term for the photography that I've been shooting since 1967 in Vietnam and all the places that I've been in between. Shot about 10,000 frames, black and white, but mostly color slides. My brother started scanning Dad's slides and it took him about a year. And after that, uh, we looked through everything on the computer and saw how incredible the photographs were. It was super inspiring because here he was at like, early 20s in Vietnam, like living history and documenting it. I started publishing them on Instagram about a year and a half ago and trying to catalog some of our family stories, uh, mostly because we have so many great stories and nobody ever believes that they're true. So now I had photographic proof of their truthness, which was very helpful. So come with me now into the Chamber of Sacred Vinyls. We have friends who have various nicknames for us, such as the Waltons on Acid because we are a functioning, happy family unit. Imagine that Bob Marley covered What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. But our lives are full of very unusual people, Rastas and beatniks and, you know, journalists and Hollywood actors and all kinds of people come through these doors every day. And I couldn't figure out a way to describe that in, in a phrase without including some of the trippy nature of our upbringing. So that was where the acid came in. Over here is the world's largest collection, according to the Whalers, of Bob Marley records. It was an unusual way to grow up. I'd be doing homework and my brother and I would be trying to, you know, study for a test the next day and there'd be, you know, eight Rastas drumming for 24 hours next door and you don't really want to go out and tell them to be quiet, you know. This is probably my most well-known picture. I shot that in San Diego and it's been bootlegged all over the world. I would come home and there would be like pounds of weed on the table and these giant, tall, scary looking Jamaican dudes everywhere. <laughs> the door would knock and somebody would come in and it would be, you know, uh, Nina Simone or Keith Richards or, you know, anyone you can imagine would come over. And I got very used to greeting famous people in my pajamas. <laughs> Photography has always been a hobby for me. I haven't really treated it maybe with the respect I should have. I just love taking pictures and I always have a camera with me wherever I go. And because I was on the radio and television for so many years, I encountered an awful lot of well-known people and it was always fun to take pictures of them and put them in kind of informal contexts. So, you know, I never threw anything away. I've got every record I've bought since 1954 going back to 78. Same thing with the pictures. I've got every frame I've ever shot in my life.